you have this um, pastor who is asking, or a Christian who is asking, I want to pray with my wife all the time. Is it necessary? Okay, I want to pray with her. But it's like she's not giving in to praying with me if I want to pray together with her. So is it necessary to pray with your spouse every day or something like that? Or you should just let them be? No, you shouldn't let them. You shouldn't <laughs> make your wife or to pray with you every day. No, no. That is control and that's manipulation. Your wife knows the Lord if she's a Christian and the Lord is our Lord and Savior. It's a good tradition if you could agree to be praying together every day but it's not a must tradition. It's something that is a matter of freedom and free will and agreement. Uh, what I've discovered as a married person is that I tried to make that mistake before because I used to know the quotation that says that every uh, house that prays, every family that prays together stays together. And uh, on, the, on, on the basis of that, I tried to build my family. And when I just married, I, was, I used to wake my wife up. I used to, <laughs> in the night, because I used to pray at night that time. I used to wake her up and, uh, and I would see that she was dozing off. And I was thinking, oh my God, what kind of wife did you give me? Maybe she's not spiritual. <laughs> so later on, one, as, when I was complaining to God that way, that one, one day, God spoke to me and said, who did I call? Is it her or you? I said, me. He said, so why are you bothering her? I'm her Lord. You, did you die for her? I said, no. I said, I died for her. So it's a personal walk with me. It's a personal relationship. You want me to pray? You go and pray. You don't even know if she prays more than you when you are not available, when you are not around, when you are at work or when you are somewhere. You don't know how I work with me. Maybe with all your prayers, she's even better than you. So don't put anybody under, this, under your yoke. Let everybody carry their own cross. So that's how God set me free from that. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. It's actually a very... Um interesting stuff that you said to it right now because this is actually a problem in most homes. I've had that a lot of times. You know, somebody wakes up by 5 a.m. and he wants to pray with the wife before he goes, but she's sleepy. And I mean, thank you, Pastor. Um, how do you find time? Okay, it's still along that line. How do you find time to pray together if your if your schedule and your wife's schedule are different? So you already answered Yes, that. you don't make her to pray together with you at the same time. Let her walk with the Lord. Praying is not the tradition. Praying is supposed to be as a result of personal communication, personal relationship of an individual with the Lord. So she's building her own relationship the way she understands. You can encourage her, you can be an example to her, but you don't need to be forcing her to do at the time that you are doing it. So find your own time that is convenient for you and let her find her own time that's convenient for her. If you have a common family need, you can agree to come together to pray about that particular need for that particular time. Then everybody is, is on their own again. But if you have children, then you want to show them a good example, it's another thing. Then you could all be coming together for a short fellowship or de devotion, which just between you and your children. And, uh, or maybe sometimes if she, she is busy, then either the father or the mother could do the devotion for the children. But you shouldn't make it such a law that will make uh, the family I mean, the, the, your wife or your spouse or your or children to be repugnant of the, of the, of the things of God. You know, you know, they will be fighting God sooner or later if you are forcing them to do something like praying. And it becomes like a duty. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah.